righty. Hello, friends. Uh, we're back. Nick Vargas here with the Source LGBT Plus Center. Again, continuing with our virtual LGBT Center in light of recent events. We can't have the public here uh, during the next few weeks, but we are bringing space, safe space to you virtually and amazing guests to share with you know, news in the community, offer some encouraging words, and I'm really happy to have Havala Forgi, the Vicar of Christ Lutheran here in Visalia, um, with us, and also the organizer of Free Mom Hugs here in Visalia. So, Havala, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Nick. Thanks so much for inviting me today. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, well, Christ Lutheran is one of those uh, amazing faith-based organizations that's open and affirming for all people and especially LGBTQ people. So y'all are important ally and I know several people in, who follow the source will be interested to know, you know what, what you're doing about services in light of Corona. So tell us what, what are right. what's the news from Chelsea? Right, well, um... Yeah, I just want to you know, restate that, yes, we are an uh, open and affirming congregation, but I like to go one step farther than that and say we are an open, affirming, and valuing congregation. Uh, the LGBTQ plus peeps in our uh, faith family are really valued, important members that have all levels of leadership in our church. So um, they're just a really important part of our family. So that's, that's how we feel about that. Uh, Services continue this weekend. Uh, we have three services, one at eight o'clock, that's traditional lutheran -y with organ and all that kind of jazz. And then we have two less formal services at 9.30 and 11. And since we have our services split up, we don't generally have more than 200 people per service anyway. So we're not worried about the large gathering edicts. Um, but also we've we've asked our senior peeps and our at-risk peeps to stay home and we're going to live stream for them and so we're going to be continuing a live stream worship service for as long as we need to uh, to keep everybody included so. yeah, that's great I, oh, I know a lot of uh, local churches are doing that going to yeah. the live stream format um, at Centers for Spiritual Living by Celia. We're going to do that. We're supposed to have our big annual meeting this Sunday, and we're planning to go through with that. Wow. We're also going to set up our technology so that people, again, people who are older, people who feel sick, can uh, join with us from a distance. Exactly. We don't want anybody to be left out, and we want our community to be safe at the same time. Yeah, for, for sure. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. We're also going to post the link to CLC so people can kind of keep up with the updates because one of the things we've noticed with the news has changed and things have changed day to day for the last week. So give people a way to, to keep up. Yeah, it's evolving. It's an evolving situation. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I really appreciate you about you, Havel, is that you're very caring and you're you're great at offering words of encouragement. And what are you doing right now to take care of yourself and your family? And, and what words do you have for people listening to us right now? Well, um, most of all, I think that we're just trying to keep a long view and to be at peace with whatever comes next. Um, I've been getting a lot of calls and inquiries uh, through my work as a church about, you know, what I think about this situation regarding, you know, what God's place is in it. Um, and I think people wonder that a lot. They wonder, is this some kind of judgment that's coming down on us because God's angry or feels bad about us or anything? And I just, I just want to say that, that there's a lot of that kind of tradition in America uh, about an angry God and a judgmental God and consequences for nations and groups of people. But that's a tradition. That's kind of a tradition that's come down since uh, people came over because they were avoiding denominations. And um, it's not 
not really matching with the gospel as we know it. And so I just want to encourage people to put that kind of stuff out of their heads, uh, that to remember that we have a loving God. And in our faith tradition, the reason that Jesus died was not to pay for anything, was not to uh, be punished by God, but to show solidarity with humans because humans suffer, humans hurt. And we believe in a God that wanted to be with us even in that. So that's really where I'm resting my faith right now, that no matter how bad things get, and I don't want them to be, be bad or get bad, but that no matter how bad things get, that this is something that our God has experienced and that will still be present with us for. And because of that, we can be there for other people, which is the big kicker for yeah, me. I, I think that's really important. That's that view you just shared is it's very realistic and also comforting to to know that you know, that's the view that God has gone through suffering with us, so that God knows, you know, what people are going through, and we know that we need to support each other during what can be very difficult times. And it's not a punishment from God. It's just what's happening. It's just we're here and we will deal with it together. Yeah, this is, this is part of life. And to me, it's, it's an opportunity to demonstrate my understanding of God's love by how I deal with other people during this time. I mean, whether that's as stupid and trivial as leaving a bottle of soap on a shelf or actually actively helping people. We have, we have plans right now to, uh, through Christ Lutheran, we have a, a program called Clip Arts that uh, works with at-risk kids in, in performing arts. And one of the, one of the um, qualifications for that program is that those kids participate in free lunch. So we've been already spinning our wheels. Okay, if these kids, if school's shut down and these kids aren't getting fed, what are we going to do? Our program's going to be shut down if schools are shut down, but we're going to make sure that those kids that we have access to, that God's put in front of us, have lunch. Anyway, so that kind of thing, I just feel, is an opportunity to, uh, you know, show, show what we believe through what we do. No, you're right. This is, I mean, we're looking at this as an opportunity for us, too, to you know, learn new ways to reach out to people and learn new ways to demonstrate love and to care for our community that, you know, like we're, like you're doing the work in front of you, we're trying to do the work in front of us too. And for me right now, that is keeping in contact with people, getting them information, letting them know that we're here, you know, to call. I, I love, you know, your idea of leaving that bottle of soap on the shelf or maybe that toilet paper. I heard a lovely story, I hope it's true, of this elderly couple that was afraid to go into the grocery store. So somebody did shopping for them so that they didn't have to worry about exposing themselves. So, I mean, little things like that that we can do for each other that can sort of uh, raise our game in how we interact as a society and people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I really, at the very core of me, I believe that that's part of our basic nature, that we want to be in community and that we want to help each other. And so, so yeah, I hope stories like that are true too. I think they are. I, I could see, I, that's something I would do. I know a lot of people who would do that too. And, um, you know, it's interesting you mentioned about our nature being that of cooperation and not necessarily competition. And there's, uh, if you ever have a chance, there is an author and lecturer named Greg Braden who talks about some of the new science showing that uh, nature and human nature especially is based on cooperation and not competition, that Darwin's theory got some things uh, skewed a little bit. And that wow. There is competition. There are creatures who feed on each other, like it's part of the cycle, but there's an underlying order and cooperation in nature 
that that happens. So if you ever have a chance to look at that, I, I see it here. I think opportunities like this are a great chance for us to, to demonstrate that side of our nature of cooperation and putting other people needs, you know, up there with your own. Yep. Yeah. And that's, I mean, for me, that's a cornerstone of, of our faith that we, in, 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 in quite kind of harsh terms, we say that we die to self and live for others. So that's, that's our gig. So I, I hope that we can live that out. Yeah, you, you certainly do. And we're looking forward to having free mom hugs back at Pride Visalia. Um, the best thing ever we had. <laughs> Um, again, Pride of Isolia is May 23rd, and we're planning, we're moving forward with Pride. Um, it's almost three months away, and we're moving forward as if it's going to happen, and we're going to have faith that it, that, that it will. And, you know, by that point, you know, we are going to need a reason to celebrate and oh, yeah. celebrate inclusion and diversity, but also resilience. That, I cannot think of a better way to celebrate. We will be there with bells on and lots uh, of <laughs> that, That's great. No, so we'll be uh, putting more news about Pride of Visalia as, as it uh, gets closer. So we're going to look forward to seeing free mom hugs there. Is there any final parting words you want to leave us with before the weekend? Um, just that if, if you tune into Christ Lutheran Church, on live stream or if you show up at our church. Uh, we're uh, on Solari Avenue, just west of Demery, Christ Lutheran. You're gonna be welcomed with open arms no matter whether you've set foot into a church for the past 20 years or your whole life. And you're gonna get a message of hope and peace through, through this time and, and really through any time because this is a big thing for everybody but we all have our own little miniature crisis all the time. So anytime that uh, anybody sets their foot through those doors, they're gonna be welcomed with love and, and acceptance and, and a message of hope and good to come. So that's all. Awesome, well, those are our great words. Thank you so much, Havala, for, for being here with us on our virtual LGBT Plus Center and Take care of yourself, and I will see you real soon. Yeah, thank you again, Nick, and thank you for what you're doing to keep the community connected. Um, the source is, is just the best thing for our community. I'm so grateful to you and grateful to everybody at the source for being there. Thank you. Alrighty, we'll take care. Have a good weekend. You too, Nick. Bye.